Hi, friends, and welcome back to Music Therapy and Beyond. I'm Kristen, one of the content creators here on the team, and I'm excited to be here with you today for our first episode of October. It's our learning segment, friends, so let's jump right into it. In the 1980s, the National Down Syndrome Society, NDSS, worked hard with others to have October proclaimed Down Syndrome Awareness Month, and it continues today. In an effort to support the mission of this month, we seek to raise awareness and celebrate the many abilities of our clients, our friends, and our loved ones with Down Syndrome with our episode today. But before we jump right into there, I want to start by reading straight from the NDSS website from an individual named Kayla, Kayla McKeon. And this is what she wrote on Down Syndrome Month and what it means to me. In quotes, The month of October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month, where we celebrate Down Syndrome and let everyone know our abilities and that we are capable of doing anything we set our minds to. I would like everyone to call us differently abled as opposed to retarded. Hate that word. Handicapped. Almost as bad. Or someone with an intellectual developmental disability. Sounds like science to me. Because just about every one of us is differently abled in some way. We have the same wants and dreams as everyone else. We can do anything anyone else can do. We are more alike than we are different. I can drive, go to college, maintain a job as the manager of grassroots advocacy at the National Down Syndrome Society, and be the first registered lobbyist with Down Syndrome. I want to date, and we want to get married. We want the American dream same as anyone else. My friends that are differently able do things equally as well. My friend Johnny is self-taught and plays the bagpipes. My friend Byron can sing like nobody's business. My friend Carrie is a Zumba instructor. The point is, we all have the same abilities as everyone else. We may take longer to do them, but that's okay. We just try our best and our hardest. That's all we want everyone to be aware of. And please, don't squash our dreams. End quote. That was a response from Kayla McKeon, and you can find it in our show notes um, linked on this episode so you can read it yourself on the NDSS website. You know one thing I heard there at the bottom of that incredible narrative? Also, I just really feel like we should have some quiet time just to take that in. So if you want to, please feel free to stop and to take some moment to really, really sit with that because I know that I've listened to it and read it a couple times. And every time I feel like just being a little bit quiet after it, because it's just so powerful. (sighs) But I'll say, to get us into the rest of the episode that there at the bottom of her narrative, I heard bagpipes, I heard singing, and I saw dancing. I heard music. mentioned in the intro, my intention today is to one, raise awareness and two, celebrate the relationship between music, music therapy, and individuals with Down syndrome. So to start, let's look at raising awareness with a brief overview of what Down syndrome is. We're going to take a short detour here to the scientific background. You know, I can't resist this. 
I love how the NDSS walks us through this, so I'm going to use some of their language on the website. So here we go. Every cell in the human body has a nucleus, where genetic material is stored in genes. Genes carry the codes responsible for all of our inherited traits and are grouped on structures called chromosomes. The nucleus contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, and Down syndrome occurs when an individual has a full or partial extra copy of chromosome 21. This additional genetic material alters the course of development and causes the characteristics associated with Down syndrome, such as low muscle tone, small stature, an upward slant to the eyes, and a single deep crease across the center of the palm. These are general characteristics, so it has to be noted that each individual is very unique, as all individuals are very unique. According to NDSS, approximately one in every 772 babies in the United States are born with Down syndrome. Due to its prevalence, Down syndrome is the most common chromosomal condition with approximately 5,100 babies born in the U.S. each year. Now, even though this condition has been around for quite some time, it wasn't until 1866 when it was officially described by John Langdon Down, which earned him, of course, the recognition of the father of the syndrome, Down syndrome. Though it wasn't until 1959, so let's talk 1866 to 1959, that a French physician identified Down syndrome as a chromosomal condition. There are actually three types of Down syndrome, non-disjunction, mosaicism, and translocation, with non-disjunction reported for approximately 95% of cases, so the majority of cases, and they're mostly known as trisomy 21 because of that 21st, the additional or partially additional copy on chromosome 21. So head to the show notes to learn more about those different forms. We're not going to dig into them here, um, but I do encourage you to head to the show notes and learn a little bit more. This syndrome occurs in people of all races and economic levels. And even though older women have an increased chance of having a child with Down syndrome, it has not been proven to be a cause. Even with all of the research around Down syndrome, we still don't know that much about the cause of this condition. But we do know there has been an incredible amount of research and resources developed to support individuals with Down syndrome. One such resource is music. If you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you know some of the benefits of music therapy. Whether we are talking about listening to music, singing, or general music making, the benefits are vast in number. Though, what specifically is the relationship between music and individuals with Down syndrome? Just as with all individuals, some may gravitate to music and others not as much. Some may come to music for recreation and others therapeutically while others connect with music both recreationally and therapeutically. I found it fascinating during my reading preparation for this episode that in the 1970s, you know, they were doing lots of mainstreaming um, at that time. But one of the first mainstreaming experiences for individuals with different abilities was music class. I think this is very likely because it's so accessible as a medium and is such a part of our culture as humans. It was observed at that time, what we know very well now, that music aided in self-expression and emotional release for individuals with Down syndrome. They also found that, aha, music can help individuals communicate better when engaged in music experiences because speech and music are so intertwined. And we now know with so much research, um, neurologically, how those are very intertwined. So let's do that. Let's talk about speech and communication. One of the characteristics mentioned of individuals with Down syndrome is low muscle tone. This doesn't just affect physical, and we'll get to that later, but it also affects speech. Low muscle tone can affect the muscles of the jaw, oral motor control, as well as motor planning. Individuals with Down syndrome often benefit from opportunities to strengthen and practice these areas, and music is a great tool to work on just that. 
We have a number of techniques we utilize in music therapy specifically, including oral motor exercises, breathing exercises, speaking in rhythm, and of course, singing. Yes, singing is such a beautiful tool to address expressive speech and all that goes along with it, including pronunciation, articulation, initiation, etc. The list goes on. Other music experiences, including working with wind instruments, kazoos, and even other auxiliary percussion. Let me just say, us music therapists, we get really creative about how we work on things um, and how we use our music. But all of those can strengthen motor control and execution of speech for individuals with Down syndrome. Now, over the course of my clinical experience, I've had the joy of working with a number of individuals with Down syndrome in the schools and clinics and through outside facilities. And one such opportunity was with an adult who came to me to work on speech and voice. We quickly identified it was the initiation of speech that was a really big hurdle for her in her social life. I also noticed that self-expression and self-esteem were also contributors. The progress she made in therapy sessions were outstanding. I can just remember some really incredible moments in session where it was just things clicked, the music, it had done its job, you know, slowly over time. And then just boom, we had a breakthrough and it was just, I I can remember those moments as being really magical. We learned favorite show tunes and practiced real-life rehearsals of initiation out in the public, as well as many other music experiences, such as songwriting and focused oral motor and breathing exercises. We utilized the full scope of music to address her goals. Her love for music was natural, and it was obvious. She could not stand still when music was going, and... We had an absolute party together because we both were so excited and motivated by music. And we often would dance and sing and make art each and every week together. Music was a love of hers and she learned to use it as a tool for herself. And she not only made progress on her speech initiation, but we observed a significant rise in self-esteem as well. She was much more social, much more engagement, like able to go out and really show who she was into society. And it was, it was really beautiful to see. I honestly can't say enough um, wonderful things about this individual. She was brave. She was determined. She worked so hard and she was effortlessly kind. Okay, so let's switch gears just a little bit. I told you we'd get to low muscle tone for fine and gross motor. And this is a characteristic of individuals with Down syndrome, some but not all. I had personally a dear client in a school who was in his teenage years and aside from being incredibly hilarious and an amazing person to be around, he did present with very low muscle tone. He had difficulty sitting up in his chair, maintaining grasp of objects and daily maintaining an upright posture. He would often be observed sitting in a chair folded up with legs, arms, and head all folded up like a ball. As you can imagine, this made daily living difficult. This young man also was difficult to motivate. It took a lot of energy for him to maintain sitting up and engaging in his schoolwork. I mean, a lot of energy for him. And during our time together, we used music as motivation a lot. He wasn't as motivated by music as some clients I've worked with, but he was motivated. And he wasn't motivated by much else. In fact, one study in Turner and Albors in uh, 2003 indicates that children with Down syndrome can have poor motivation, and I did observe that in this individual. So we embarked on a journey together to build engagement and endurance, as well as work on posture and strength and muscle tone. We used every technique in the book, including instrument playing, songwriting, singing, rhythmic auditory stimulation, which us music therapists use often with walking, wind instruments, drums, you name it, we tried it and we used it. Because of the inherent rhythmic patterns in music, it is actually a great tool for cueing motor skills and we use that a lot. 
We worked with paddle drums reaching from side to side to work on balance. He, and as he built muscle tone and endurance, we often would um, sit up and sing together in a fill in the blank style for a specific duration of time as he was engaging with his augmentative device and visuals to build those school related skills all while sitting up and maintaining that posture. And I'll say we came a long way in a few years we worked together and I had a front row seat to see how beautiful music was in all of its versions and how helpful it was as a tool for this incredible young man. It's just such a really beautiful memory I have and I'm glad I got to share it with you. So this extra genetic material found on the 21st chromosome can affect a wide range of skills, not just speech and motor, but cognition, as well as social skills and emotional wellness. In fact, a positive effect is observed across many studies of children with Down syndrome and music in their relationships and self-image. In addition, a significant decrease in anxiety levels were observed in children with Down syndrome using music therapy during consultation with dental anxiety. I thought this was fascinating. And this is a significant finding since individuals with Down syndrome are at higher risk to have dental concerns, including developing teeth more slowly, which potentially results in more dental visits and and that higher risk of dental anxiety. So it was really good to read that um, music therapy was effective at helping to decrease that anxiety level. Music is also a great tool to work on memory, organization, sequencing, as well as emotional identification and expression, and of course, the full range of social skills. In general, research both objective and subjective supports the use of music for building and supporting social interaction among children and adults with Down syndrome. In addition to all of these, music is an incredible tool to support academic and developmental goals. In fact, a mother of a child with Down syndrome reported one of the most important abilities music and singing stimulate is auditory discrimination. And that was from Baker in 1999, and you can see that article um, linked in the show notes. She continues to support the use of music as a tool to aid in the development of language for children with Down syndrome by discussing the importance of repetition and the intrinsic nature of music, the ability to construct phrases and sentences within songs, pairing actions with music, stimulating imagination within singing, learning communication cycles of questions and answer building vocabulary, singing in a group to build cooperation, developing skills of sequencing events and actions and ideas. And this is just to name a few of the innate characteristics of music that make it a great medium for all individuals and especially those with Down syndrome. In addition, It was found that infants with Down syndrome show sustained attention during interaction with a caregiver during infant-directed singing. We know this interaction to be a fundamental component of self-regulation in infancy and that infants with Down syndrome can have attention and information processing deficits, resulting in potentially more difficulty in developing a secure attachment with a caregiver. So this is fantastic to hear that The individuals with Down syndrome had on par the same amount of sustained attention as their typically developing peers during infant-directed singing. And I just thought that was a really fascinating study, and that is also in our show notes that you can read. Caregivers of children with Down syndrome have been reported strongly believing their children enjoys music, likes to move and dance when they hear music, and likes to perform. We could go much deeper into all of these aspects, but the effectiveness of music to address all of these goals is the same. Time and time again, it is observed being an effective tool for individuals with Down syndrome. It was my hope and intention for this episode to honor Down Syndrome Awareness Month, to raise awareness, and to celebrate individuals with Down Syndrome and their abilities and their relationship with music through known research and my personal experience as a music therapist. 
As we wrap up this episode, I want to take a moment to say how grateful I've been to have had the opportunity to work with and live life with individuals with Down syndrome. Some of the dearest memories I have are with my friends with Down syndrome. I can also concur with Kayla's sentiment in the beginning that, in quotes, we have the same wants and dreams as everyone else. We can do anything anyone else can do. We are more alike than we are different, end quotes. I agree with this statement with all of my heart. It was an honor to be here today and to have a space to share this information, and I hope those listening learned something new and were encouraged. Head to the show notes to read some more articles, pick out some of your own, find out what's going on in advocacy with the NDSS, attend a Down Syndrome Awareness Walk, and get involved this month. Happy Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Until next time, friends. Thanks for tuning in to Music Therapy and Beyond. For show notes from today's episode, head to our website, musictherapyandbeyond.com. And while you're there, check out our shop. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe to share our work on all platforms. And don't forget to tune in every Monday for another great episode. We'll see you next time.